charging, discharging, you learned that also. So bring all those ideas and mostly MF. Moving rod will behave like a cell, finish over. Nothing big is there. And the EMF of that cell depends on the speed of the rod. Since we applied a force F, so look at how the current all. So first we'll stick onto the, this one, there's a loop. So we have here a register. There's a rod, the moving rod I'll replace with a cell. <coughs> and, and there's a capacitor. First I have this much. This R, this is E, and it is moved with a speed V. There's a B bar. In both the regions, the B bar is into the plane, and B is uniform. If they're non-uniform, they, they'll mention. Uniform field. Okay, there's a rod PQ. Length of the rod PQ is, and there's no resistance. If the resistance of the rod is there, I, they would have mentioned. Okay, keep it this much, you know. Uh, no, no. How, how the apply the Faraday's law? In in the left loop, there's a you call loop one. There's a loop two. In the loop one, lo look at the conventions I'm putting. Uh, flux is negative. D five by dt. D five one by dt is negative negative at the rod PQ moves towards right. And the rod PQ moves towards right. The flux in the first loop will increase. Negative flux in D5 by D negative. EMF induced will be positive. Come for second loop. Divide it into the plane. It is into the plane. So therefore negative. And area of correction of loop is decreasing. No? So D5 2 by DT will be positive. Negative flux decreases, d5 by dt positive, e2 should be negative. So how the induced current due to individual loops, they should be in opposite direction. Clockwise, anti-clockwise. So first I'll trace it out. So this will be the i1. What about I2? How, how I2 will flow? The I2 will flow in this direction. <coughs> now this will be direction of I2. Clockwise. So the resultant current here should be I1 plus I2. Okay, no? So two loops will come so take help of this one now in, in individual loop calculate the direction of induced current and there's not pq is common for both the loop there you predict the the resultant current so the whole circuit now what pen let, let the total current be i what is i i is equal to i1 plus i2 let, let me draw now, there's the first problem I'm just showing in detail. The your coming problems directly you can take help of these conditions. The, the resultant total current here will be just show only I. It, it, easy for you in calculation. So now your BL force will act here. So BL due to what? The resultant field. <coughs> the resultant field is here into the plane. No? So there's a BL force. And what is I? I is equal to I1 plus I2. And this is the key, very important part for us. I is equal to I1 plus I2. Once if you are able to write I equal to I1 plus I2, problem is solved. Now, uh, what is the question asked? Find the velocity of the rod at any time t. For that, uh, what is the equation? Ma is equal to some external force I should apply, no? And that is what F. I think here, F will make it. Because in the question given F, no? The external force that is being applied. Directly straight away what you can write. Acceleration of the rod is equal to F minus BIL. MA equal to F minus BIL. If you can get current I, then we can solve it. Our equation will be like this. And what, what is further A? DV by DT. 
So <coughs> what to do with I is what? You have to search here. So I'll take help of this equation. I is equal to, uh, what should be the I1? Second, forget, forget capacitor, what is I1? I1 should be E by R. Only cell and register R, R is there. Because how, how is this uh, cell connected, or uh, this register R connected parallel to the cell? So what is the EMF across the register R? Motion EMF E only. And what is the EMF, what is the potential difference across capacitor? That of the motion EMF only. So let this be plus Q minus Q at any instant of time. No, this is time T. This is T equals zero. Let this be the condition. So shall we write uh, what is I2? Uh, whenever capacitor comes, tell me <coughs> how do we express current? Current through the capacitor. DQ by DT. CBLA. Is, is it justified? Look at, look at one. If acceleration of the rod is A, then what is the current through the rod or that capacitor? That should be equal to C, B, L, A. Uh, sir, why you are writing this I equal to I1 plus I2? Because this is what needed, no? So now, <coughs> how do this has I2 equal to this one? So we'll proceed like this. Huh? Uh, we took blue color, no? Yeah. Q equal to C into E. C, B, L, V. DQ by DT is equal to CBL DV by DT. Hmm. Work out individually if you are uh, not confident enough. What is I1 equal to E by R? BLV by R. Substituting both. I'll, I'll write this expression. should be like this. So therefore now, uh, what is I is equal to now? What is I is equal to? I1 plus I2. So BLV by R plus CBLA. So this I'm going to substitute here. MA equal to F BL I is bring acceleration term on one side m into m into so, so this sorry a into m plus c b square l square is equal to f minus b square l square v by r further what is acceleration acceleration should be written as dv by dt Okay, then it's the integration. Solve it. You'll get expression for speed as a function of time. Then after a long time, they'll ask you, put t equal to infinity and indicate what conditions will arise. After a long time, uh, what can happen? For that, we have to solve. You'll get expression for velocity. After a long time, what conditions? So because of acceleration, speed will continuously will increase. As the speed V increases, the current I will also increase. And at one instant, BL will balance applied force F. Then acceleration will become zero. Then the charge across capacitor remains constant. But there'll be a flow of current in the circuit here. There won't be a flow of current. And, and the, it will attain terminal velocity. Try to analyze. Mathematically, <coughs> you take help of this one. Get expression for V as a function of time. I'll, I'm, I derive it. I ended up equation like this. Huh? Fr B square L square 1 minus e to power of minus lambda t. What is lambda? Lambda is a Rm. c b square l square by uh, 
this is a lambda. So this is the expression. Put t equal to infinity. So finally, what will happen? The rod will move with a constant. Not, rod will not come to rest. Then what is the steady state charge across capacitor? They ask you. At t equal to infinity, what is the charge stored in the capacitor? Can we analyze <coughs> at t equal to infinity the circuit? The total circuit will be. I'll just come to the. At t equal to infinity. It will move with a constant speed v and call the terminal velocity and there will be a charge across capacitor will be constant call q infinity. How to calculate the terminal velocity vt equal to fr by b square l square only. Check the expression, sir. Oh, initial velocity is u is there. <coughs> oh, I didn't consider that one. No? Initial velocity of the rod is given. No? I think I'll, I'll remove it huh? because a lot of calculations will come. In, in, I'll remove that part, it doesn't make any difference. So I'll, I'll put it at t equals 0, the rod is at test. I'll write it. We'll do one thing, we'll make 0. If initial velocity is there, nothing will happen. The equations become very lengthy. Let, let me, I think, yeah. Okay, this will be so how to calculate this q infinity q infinity it should be equal to c in e infinity <coughs> what is the infinity b v t l and what is v t this word substitute this c b v t is f r by b square l square into l q infinity is equal to c F R by B L. So this is the ch charge stored after long time. Now, if the once charge is constant, then it will be zero, no? I two will be zero because I two is what? When as long as charge is charge flowing through capacitor is varying, the current I two will flow. I try to see overall uh, both resistor capacitor. Again, again, you try to uh, go back to the basics. What is the basics means? Uh, I am moving, I am moving the rod by a constant force f. Then what all cases are there? If you just give velocity v to the rod pq and release, what will happen? If you move with a constant acceleration, what conditions will come? If you move with a constant speed, what will come? If you move with a constant speed, no current will flow through capacitor. Am I right? Because when the current through capacitor will be non-zero, when the rod accelerates. What about the across resistor? If the rod is moving with a velocity, if the rod is PQ is having velocity, there'll be a current through the resistor. Current through the capacitor will be non-zero only when the rod PQ accelerates because there's a relationship is there. No? You look at this. So it's uh, to trouble you objective question. The rod PQ is moved with a constant speed. Then what is the charge in capacitor? Yes, you can find out charge, but what is the current through capacitor will be zero. That's what, that's what we have here. No current through this, but there'll be a flow of current. There'll be a flow of current here. A current <coughs> I1 will be flowing through this. BI1L is what force I should apply. Check it. Uh, these are the some objective questions. Are there in book? 
Okay, we'll take the next one. Now, this will be much easier because already you have two loop just now we discussed, no? I think you can easily manage. Read the question. The rod is moved with a constant acceleration. A. B, B is into the plane. So I'll, I'll give overall circuit. Circuit appears like this. And 